What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, and today I'm bringing you a tier list on every single Paradox Pokemon in the game. This list is going to be basically covering which Pokemon are going to be the best Paradox and which are going to be the worst. And, uh, well, we just found out that Paradox Pokemon, at least in Series 1 for VGC in Gen 9, will not be available. Which is crazy. I thought these Pokemon were such a great and unique introduction to the series. They're good. They make a lot of sense and to the lore of Pokemon. And, yeah, we can't use them in doubles, which is super super stupid but hey it is what it is it is what it is they made the decision hopefully in a preview in a future generation or future series we're gonna be allowed to use these pokemon uh if you guys like how to guides on how to use these, these different pokemon then make sure to stick around leave a like on the video help us reach our like goal of 75 likes comment which pokemon you want to see me cover next and different video ideas down below as well and of course subscribe to the channel we're on the road to 3,000 subscribers we have just about another month to get there and uh tomorrow we'll be back with another guide so starting off with this tier list here we have the s plus plus tier this is going to be the best of the best pokemon that honestly should not be uh well around uh the best pokemon available in the format we then have the ubers tier these are pokemon that are definitely going to be uber pokemon it should not be allowed in most formats we then have the greats tier these are pokemon that are going to be really good probably in the ou tier but not in the, well, they're not going to be allowed in the Ubers tier. Well, they, they will be allowed in the Ubers tier, but they're not going to be in the Ubers tier legitimately. Then there's going to be the good tier. These are Pokemon that it makes sense for them to be in the OU tier, but I can definitely see a universe where they fall down to the UU tier. Average are Pokemon that I think are going to end up being UU, and then uh, it's fine, I guess, are Pokemon that are, well, they're going to be below UU because, you know, it's fine to have them. I don't know why they were made this bad, but hey, they were made this bad. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Starting off with the first mod, it is going to be Brute Bonnet. Now, Brute Bonnet is the form for the paradox form for Amoongus, which is really weird because Amoongus was a very defensive Pokemon that they made into a crazy good physical attacker. Yeah, I, I don't know why they did that. It, it makes no sense to me at all. And the fact that it got rid of the poison typing, I think, is also a really big negative. I would rather this thing be poison and dark than grass and dark, because grass and dark, the typing is just absolutely terrible and we just got a grass and dark starter doesn't make sense for us to have this pokemon here it does have a really good attacking stat has a decent amount of coverage option and decent amount of moves has access to priority sucker punch which is good considering it has a really low speed stat has access to coverage in the form of outrage and access to zen headbutt as well it's got close combat for crying out loud too why the hell does this thing have close combat i don't know it, it doesn't make sense the good thing is it does keep spore which is really nice the main concern that i have with this is that amoongus is better regular amoongus is better because that thing had regenerator which is the best of ability in the entire game at least in singles and the good news at least for this pokemon is it does keep rage powder so when it does come to doubles it at least have some redirection which could be kind of nice and pair that with protosynthesis to boost your attack more than likely in the sun it could be very very powerful so I, overall what do i think about this pokemon here i think this pokemon overall as a whole is going to end up being in the good tier okay it's gonna be good um i think that it could definitely actually what am i saying no i based on my based on my previous analogies i this pokemon is going to be in the uu tier i believe that's going to be uh, average i don't think this pokemon is going to actually be higher up than good uh, i think it's going to have a lot of utility in the uu tier but i don't think it's going to make any sense for it to actually stick in the ou tier it's never it's just not going to make it there at all the good news is it does get access to spore so that's the main reason why I think it won't fall down below that because Spore is such an amazing move. And this Pokemon, while it is slow, it's not as slow as something like Amoongus is. It's 55 base speed. It's fast enough to get the job done sometimes. So yeah, moving on though is going to be Roaring Moon. This thing I can say right now, I believe is going to be, honestly, if we're looking at Draft League, I think it's going to go to Ubers. If we're looking at VGC and I'm looking at Smogon, I think it's going to be in the great tier. However, I made a guide on this Pokemon and I do think that this Pokemon overall, when it's all said and done, will go into the uber steer this thing is crazy the reason why is that it gets access to dragon dance and has a ridiculous 139 base attack stat it also has ridiculous speed i believe i believe it's based 116 or one i think it's 119 if i'm mistaken roaring moon is 119 so that's really really good the fact that it has that as it has base stat total and the fact that it has amazing attack amazing speed great coverage options has access to basically amazing moves on the physical side for dragon and for dark has access to moves to hit opposing steel type pokemon like earthquake can dragon dance up which is amazing has access to roost for recovery there's so much this thing can do offensively that it really is just absolutely insane you give this thing a booster energy it's going to be absolutely insane you give this thing a choice band slap it on a sun team nothing is taking the hit nothing okay it's absolutely crazy how good this pokemon is and definitely belongs in the ubers tier next up is iron valiant i also believe this pokemon is gonna end up in the ubers tier 
Why? Well, the speed stat on this Pokemon with 116 base speed, it's typing. A fighting and fairy is absolutely incredible. It's got a really, really, really powerful offensive typing, and its attack stats, both on the physical and special side, are both elite. 130 and 120 overall, with the crazy amount of coverage this thing gets, is insane. The fact that fairy and fighting hit basically everything in the metagame outside of like poison types, and then you have access to terror astralize into a point into a, a psychic type Pokemon to break through poison types or a ground type really good it also has the ability to go for zen headbutt or not zen but cycle cut excuse me as a way to hit those pokemon those poison types which is awesome having thunderbolt to go mix the breakthrough pokemon like corviknight is really nice there's a lot of things this thing can do here i just don't believe i don't see a universe where this thing will not eventually end up in the ubers tier i just think it's way too strong in the meta game if not it'll end up kind of like the landris of the meta where it's going to be on so many different teams and break so so well and in draftly i do think it's going to also end up getting banned people are going to show that it is way too good to be allowed in the formats then we have one of the most disappointing Pokemon, I believe, in uh, in this game. That's going to be Iron Thorns. Now, Iron Thorns, Electric and Rock, terrible typing. Terrible typing. The fact that Titar, so first of all, Titar, regular Titar, is so much better than this. So much better. The reason why Titar is so much better is for two reasons. Number one, it has an amazing special defense stat because of the sand. And number two, it has the dark typing, which is able to basically have it be an amazing counter to opposing psychic type Pokemon. The fact that it's so bulky is awesome, but this is actually less bulky than Titar is, which is saying something. I don't like that. I feel like Titar, this Pokemon should be an improvement on Titar, and it's just not. It really isn't. Overall, I think it's missing quite a bit. Its speed stat base 72 is, you know, fine, I guess. I guess it does get Dragon Dance to boost its speed. It does get access to, uh, does get, I don't think it gets Rock Polish. It does not get Rock Polish as well, which does hurt, and no Atomize here. So no way to boost its speed up by plus two, which regular Titar does have access to, but this thing does not have a four times, weak to fight, four times weakness to fight anymore. It doesn't. It has, however, a four times weakness to ground, which is arguably worse in this metagame. That's terrible. I do think this thing is missing out on a lot of utility. It does have access to momentum now with Volt Switch, which is awesome. It still has access to your hazards and stealth rocks, uh, and it does get spikes as well, which is very, very important for a Pokemon in this metagame right now. But I just think that overall, even though its coverage is great, it gets access to ice moves, fire moves, dragon moves, ground moves, basically everything under the sun. But overall, I feel like it's not at the level that Titar would be. And because of that, I think it's going to end up being in the average tier. It's going to be in UU for sure. Uh, I can see a world where this thing even falls a bit further to RU, depending on how offensive the metagame is and how many Pokemon get allowed in the, uh, uh, well, if not allowed, but, but leaked out or, or released in the next DLC that we're going to end up getting to this, team, this, uh, this Pokemon. Then we're going to go to Great Tusk. This thing is crazy. I think it's, it's going to be in the Great tier. This Pokemon has a lot of good things going for it. It is one of the best Pokemon in terms of the typing it has. Fighting and ground is absolutely amazing. I love that typing here. Great Tusk also has ridiculous speed, I think. At base 87 overall, yeah, it's not crazy, but the fact that it is Pokemon this offensive, 131 attack, 131 defense, 87 speed, that's nuts. That's insane. You pair it with Protosynthesis to get you an attack boost or a defense boost, you're going to be really hitting insanely hard. You have access to amazing coverage options. You have a way to, to break through opposing ice type, not ice type Pokemon, flying type Pokemon with your ice type attack in ice spinner. You have access to knockoff as well. You're an amazing rapid spinner too. You get access to hazards. There's so many good things this Pokemon can do. And just the fact that it has a lot of different roles is what makes it so, so good. Because you never know what set your opponent is going to be running. That's one of the reasons why I think that Great Tusk deserves to be in the great tier. Next up is going to be Coridon. This thing is the box art legend for Pokemon Scarlet. There's a lot of good things going for this. This Pokemon's ability, Oricalcum Pulse, will basically set up Sunny Day. At the same time, it will give a 30% boost in attack in the sun, which is crazy good. The fact that this thing will power up the, the Paradox Pokemon from the past, as well as powering up itself, is very valuable. You have access to crazy moves like Collision Course, being able to give you an extra boost in damage, like a Life Orb boost, if it's a super effective attack, which is really good on the, what, the Steel types, the Dark types, the Normal types. And I believe that's it. I might be missing one. Either way, crazy. Oh, rock types as well. There you go. So a crazy, crazy Pokemon in terms of the physical attacking prowess it has with what? 135 base attack, 135 base speed, plus the boost on top of that from the ability, plus the boost on top of that from the ability, the, the item it has, like Life Orb, Choice Band, whatever the case may be. It is an amazing, amazing selection to have on basically any team if you're playing in the Ubers tier. I do think, though, that this is going to be better than Roaring Moon and Iron Valiant. I think this is going to go go straight to the S++ tier. This thing is really amazing, and it's honestly going to be banned from basically every single competitive metagame unless there's going to be a lot of Ubers that are released in the format, which honestly, I doubt even happens. So yeah, we're going to shove it up there. Next up is going to be Iron Jugulus. Oh, this Pokemon is so sad. It is so sad. Honestly, I kind of want to put it into like, it's fine, I guess. 
because I think this Pokemon is just terrible. They did this, they did this thing so, so dirty. I actually think, you know what? I am going to put it over here into the It's Fine, I guess, tier. I think there's so little going for it. There's so little this thing can do. It's just such a terrible Pokemon compared to everything else available. And that really, really hurts. The move pool it has, it's not great. Okay, the fact that it's typing, while it's, it's good, it's a good typing to have, Honestly, I prefer regular Hydra's typing of Dragon and Dark with Levitate. I'd rather have that over this. Its stat distribution is worse than regular Hydra's as well. Obviously, not great. The fact that it loses access to a couple of really solid moves, like Dragon Dance, hurts it a lot because you could get to that boost in speed and put in a lot of work. The good news is you have access to Stab Knockoff. Obviously, a very good thing, but you lose Nasty Plot as well. And guess what? You're a special attacker. So why would you? Why would it be good for it to lose Nasty Plot? It hurts. Just overall, I think Iron Jugulus loses so much going from being a regular Hydreigon into Iron Jugulus. I'd rather have regular Hydra overall 100 times out of 100 compared to this Pokemon here. Definitely. Definitely going to be our first It's Fine, I guess, Pokemon. Next up is going to be Iron Hands. Now, this, po this Pokemon is the one I have the least amount of familiarity with. Iron Hands, Fighting and Electric. This thing is really, really good on Trick Room. 140 base attack is nothing to laugh at. 154 HP is insane. Imagine slapping a Choice Band or a Life Orb or, or even a Booster Energy on the set in Trick Room. It's going to be hitting so, so hard. Definitely going to be seeing a lot of play, especially in doubles because of the power that this thing provides on the physically offensive side through Trick Room and through so many other things. I think this is going to be our first Pokemon that's going to be in the good tier. I think it's going to have such an amazing home on Trick Room teams that it's never going to really fall out of the metagame in OU and will always be a threat you have to be aware of. In general, just a crazy Pokemon has access to a lot of different moves and just has one of the best stat distributions for any of these Pokemon, especially because it kind of knows what it wants to do. It wants to be a physical attacker and it wants to be slow and it's fat as hell with 154 base HP and 140 attack. Love this thing. I think it's going to do a lot of work in the metagame, but again, is the one I'm least familiar with compared to all these other Paradox Pokemon. Next up is going to be Iron Treads. I'll be honest, I am not a fan of Iron Treads compared to, Iron, to, compared to um, the Great Tusk. But I cannot doubt this thing has amazing, amazing synergy with a lot of the metagame. Its typing is great. I do think it's going to fall into the great tier overall. It has awesome speed at base 106. Still has got really good attack at 112. And its defense at 120 is still very, very impressive. It can get a booster energy in both its speed or its attack, which is really powerful. Has access to a lot of really powerful options to attack. Things like knockoff and mega horn. Things like earthquake, heavy slam. It gets access to ice spinner as well. Wish I got Ice Shard, but hey, it is what it is. And I love the fact that it's a ground type with momentum. That is such an amazingly valuable tool to have. Pokemon that are ground types don't usually have access to as much momentum as we'd like. It's like Landorus, Gligar, and Gliscor, and like that's pretty much it. So having access to Volt Switch on Iron Treads, super, super valuable. I like it a lot. I do think it's going to fall in the great tier, though. Next up is Iron Moth. Iron Moth, I also think, is going to fall into the great tier. Overall, I think it's going to be doing a lot of work and really define a lot of things in the OU metagame. Uh, I do think that there's possibilities that based on whatever becomes the most popular uh, way to play with a team, I do think that eventually could fall into the good tier, but I think great is where I'm going to be keeping it for now because what it provides to a team is a fast special breaker that can just decimate teams with a booster energy up or if it just gets an agility up somehow and gets like fiery dance boosts, which is really powerful and really common to do as well. In the sun, it boosts its stab options already, which is awesome too. And it gets just a boost from the protosynthesis, from the uh, the quark drop for this Pokemon here. I do think that overall, it's going to have a lot of utility in the metagames, both for singles and in doubles and for draft league. And overall, it's coverage. Absolutely fantastic. Amazing coverage options this thing has access to. I really do like that a lot. Next up is going to be arguably the worst of all the Pokemon that are paradoxes, Screamtail. Yeah, um... Screamtail is bad. Uh, the fact that this thing has like no offensive pressure really hurts. It is, however, one of the few wish passers that are available in the format and has access to a really good HP stat. I believe it's like 116 or something. Uh, 115. I was off by one. It's, a, it's HP with its speed at 111. It's awesome. It's got really good bulk, 99 and 115. The issue is, while its move pool is great and diverse, it just has no offensive pressure at all. 65 attack, 65 special attack. It does nothing for you. Really hurts. Wish this thing got something like Super Fang. Unfortunately, it does not, and that does really hurt it as well. It doesn't get access to U-turn. Doesn't it? Doesn't get access to uh, to Volt Switch. It does get Baton Pass, but a lot of places, a lot of places will ban Baton Pass outright. So you gotta be careful. Um, but I do think that this thing has some utility. It's just I don't feel like it's anywhere near as good or on the same level as any of the other Pokemon we've covered so far. I honestly want to make a, like another tier to put Screamtail in that one. But I do think that this thing will end up. At the worst case, probably RU. I don't think it makes any sense for it to end up in NU. It's got too good of stats for that. Next up is Flutter Main. Flutter Main, I'm going to put to the top of Ubers. And I 
kind of want to put into S plus here. You know what? I am going to put into S plus. I think that Fluttermane is one of the best Pokemon ever released. This thing has such an amazing matchup against basically everything. It's offensive typing of Fairy and Ghost is crazy. It's really, really powerful because one of the best answers to Ghost types are going to be, well, Dark types, and that's because they can hit them super effectively. But now you have Fairy to break those things. You have Normal types that you can that come out on you, but Normal types are kind of setup fodder, especially if you're running Terror Blast fighting. It, it, there's no reason. There's no reason to not run this Pokemon, to not run Fluttermane if you have the ability to. Its speed stat is crazy. Its special attack stat also crazy. There's so many different things this thing can do, but the main thing is with the ridiculous special attack speed and special defense that it has, you don't really need to do anything other than maybe click sub, maybe click combine and just go, for, go to town with like Moon Blast, maybe Mystical Fires, Shadow Balls, Texas, whatever the case may be. You, that's really all you got to do. I feel this Pokemon is, is way too good and will probably be banned from most competitive metagames, especially when we're looking at uh, singles in doubles. I don't think it's going to get banned because like nothing really does get banned. But at the same time, this Pokemon is not healthy in my opinion. It might be a bit better in doubles because you can actually double target it. But yeah, that's what we're going to go with. Next up is going to be Sandy Shocks. I believe this Pokemon will be in the good tier. Uh, why in the good tier for this Pokemon here? Well, I think it's uh, the fact that this Pokemon has, again, a typing that is really good. Ground Electric is a really good typing and it has really good speed as well at base 101. The issue with this Pokemon, the main issue with this thing, is that it kind of is lacking in terms of coverage options. It really doesn't have a way to effectively ground type Pokemon outside of Terrastalizing. And the best Terrastalizing it could do would be like what? Electric, water, um, I don't know, grass. None of them are going to be as effective as having a ground type on this Pokemon. I do think that it has a lot of utility though with the fact that it can bolt switch around. It's a very hard hitter. It can be a great specialty offensive breaker. I just think that the issue is it's going to be outclassed by so many things. And the reason why I'm not putting it into the average tier is because I do believe there's a pretty big divide between the, uh, the what is it called, the Iron Thorns, the Brute Bonnet, and the Sandy Shocks. Even though I do think it'll end up in the UU tier, there's a pretty big gap between these two Pokemon over here. So we're going to keep it over here in the good tier. Next up is going to be Maridon. This Pokemon will be up here. Uh, now, honestly, do you think it's going to be better than Caridon? I, I couldn't say. Okay, I do think that overall, both these Pokemon do a lot of good things. In doubles, I think that Maridon's going to be better. In singles, I do think it'll be Coridon. Okay, so I'll say that for sure. This thing has awesome stats all around. It's obviously it's a box art legendary Pokemon. It's going to have so many good sets that can run. But the fact that this thing has 135 special attack, 135 speed is really powerful. It's got a lot of great things going for it. Electro Drift is an awesome move to have. Again, just a really powerful, consistent electro type attack better than something like the uh, uh the thunderbolt obviously you really want to go with this hadron engine as an ability also really powerful boosting up the quark drives of all the pokemon i do think that this pokemon supports the doubles metagame a lot better than karadon does and karadon supports the singles metagame a lot more than miradon does then we have iron bundle okay iron bundle is going to go into the ubers tier at the top of the ubers tier i don't think that when new pokemon come into the game when there's going to be more dlc dropped that this thing will be as good as it is right now. It's still very, very good, but I was honestly a little shocked that it ended up getting banned. Yeah, it has a great speed. I believe it's the best speed out of every single one of the uh, uh, of the Paradox Pokemon. 136, if I'm mistaken, is the right speed stat for the Iron Bundle. Let's just double check quickly. Iron Bundle is, yeah, 136. Uh, it also has ridiculous special attack at 124, but its coverage options are really not great. The main thing is, it has access to freeze dry and water moves. That's kind of all you need, really. It's all you need. The fact that basically every single Pokemon that resists water is kind of weak to freeze dry is amazing. It does get access to momentum as well. It's one of, I think, three Pokemon that gets flip turn. It's like Palafin and Iron Bundle. I believe that, that's all that gets access to flip turn in this generation. It still has U turn, still has taunt, still has the ability to sub up. Terrastalizing is amazing. There's so many things that thing can do in terms of breaking offensively. I just think that its checks are so limited in a format like this. In national decks formats, it will fall off. And that's why I won't put it into the S++ tier. But I do think that in Ubers is definitely where it's going to stick around and possibly even fall down a little bit as, again, we get more Pokemon in the format. On the other hand, I feel like Roaring Moon and Iron Valley will kind of rise a little bit as we get more and more Pokemon. And then finally, Slither Wing. Now, Slither Wing. The ancient form of Volcarona. I do like this Pokemon a lot. I think, unfortunately, though, this thing will end up being in probably the a great tier i think it's a step below iron moth i think what it does is it really is able to break effectively and be an amazing dark type answer uh there are a lot of good dark types in the format right now the issue is i think there are even better dark type answers like well iron valiant and well great tusk these pokemon are able to handle dark types, in my opinion better than slitherwing can which is a big deal 
but they're also able to be uh, able to pressure it a lot more, and I believe they're both faster, considering that uh, Slytherin is base 81, if I'm mistaken, and uh, Dawn Fan, not great Dawn Dawn Fan, but Great Tusk is 87, and Iron Valiant is 116. That is a big deal. Uh, they also have really good coverage options. That's not to say this thing doesn't have good coverage options, but I do prefer the coverage options on Iron Valiant ahead of Great Tusk, and I prefer Great Tusk over Slytherin. So yeah, guys, that's the new nice tier list for this video. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. I do find it kind of funny that at the beginning of the video, I was like, wow, there's a lot more of these uh, Scarlet Paradox Pokemon at the top. But I do think that overall, the Violet Pokemon are just better. I do think that there's a bit of an issue, a bit of a weakness towards the end of the list that we covered. Uh, Screamtail, obviously nowhere near as strong as something like the, uh, well, the Iron Thorns, for example. I do think that there's a pretty big divide between Iron Jugulus and Brute Bonnet but the divide is less than something like Screamtail and Iron Thorns. That's, that's a big thing. Uh, overall, guys, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like on the video. Help us reach our like goal of 75 likes. Comment your thoughts on the tier list down below. Let me know which tier list you want to see me cover next, as well as giving me suggestions for other content you want to see on the channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as well, as we're on the road to 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I know we can do it. And if you guys want to see more guides on how to use videos and more competitive Pokemon Wi-Fi battles, make sure to subscribe. Like I said, thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all tomorrow.